What's up, YouTube? Our ditch witch today, um, one of the track rollers broke. It's gotta be back to work tonight, or no, I mean in the morning, actually. And uh, we gotta fix it and get it done. So here we go. And kids, only if you're of age and in moderation, right? That stuff can get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it's like playing with snakes, by the way. They bite sometimes. Right, Levi? Mm -hmm. Everything in moderation, right? The Bible says drunkenness is a sin. Mm -hmm. So, this is our busted part here. You can see this track roller should look like this one. You can see they're all the same, right? It's that five bolt pattern. By the way, we got a video replacing this front one a few back, so if you wanna watch that, you can watch that. This one's gonna be a little more challenging because it's under the machine and we're gonna have to figure out how to get under there and bang that out. But we're gonna back this thing up. We're gonna take this track off, try to get some access up under this thing and knock that pin out and uh, go from there, so. Here we go, the machine's got I think about 1400 hours on it. The front one went out at 1100 on that side as well. Oh crud, I just remember the other thing. I'm gonna take the bucket off, just get some weight off this machine. Then we'll put the safety latch up on it. Oops, sorry, Levi. What do you think, boss? Can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, probably not. All the things we're gonna do here is, so we bought this assembly, which is faster and cheaper and easier than trying to just rebuild that and do a new spindle and try to salvage this. Like 100, 150 bucks just for this whole assembly, done deal. Now people are DMing me on Instagram, at Almond Landscape, and telling me to buy these rollers, these three three ring rollers, and put them on the front and back, and you get less detracking and stuff like that, which is interesting. But the engineers did it this way for a reason, but I don't know why. Uh, but it's interesting nonetheless. So with that being said, and you can see there, you know, just all boogered up. So uh, we're gonna loosen this nut or drive this nut out on the backside here drive this thing out which will be a lot of fun because you can't get a swing on it hardly or maybe it'll come out easy who knows we'll see uh, but we're gonna release this grease fitting that'll allow the tracks to collapse we'll take the track off and um and then we're going to uh start driving that thing out uh, i put the boom up to give me some room i don't know if i think ultimately it's probably just going to give me more room we're gonna well we might as well do it now um and we put that on there and we'll release this thing down and put that pressure on there. So that way we're safe and uh, hopefully eliminate anything. These Ditch Witch decals need to come off. It needs to say Almond on there. I don't need to advertise for Ditch Witch. They don't pay me to, so I need to market my own company. So maybe I'll rip those off tonight and put Almond stickers on there. Uh, now Irish Setter, they do send us boots. Thanks Irish Setter, appreciate it. These Crosby's here, I like these a lot. They've held up well. Levi, what are you wearing there, buddy? Um, some some of those yeah touch that one could be hot so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna hit these a little bit of with some pb blaster which back when i had really junk equipment um there would be a uh, a lot of pb blaster around it was kind of a cologne of oops sorry levi it was kind of a cologne of mine there for a while i used it so much it seemed like we're gonna drive this spindle out of here oh jeez levi um we're gonna drive the spindle out of here that's grease. That's what you just got on your knee. Yeah. Can you crush it? Whoa. That hurt my ears. Yeah. Oh, that was ridiculously easy. Okay, well that took nothing. So hopefully that means that driving this pin out will also take nothing. So next thing is we're going to go through a progressive stage of violence here. We're gonna spray some, uh, which actually I might as well do that now. The longer that stuff sits, the better. So we're going to, uh, Britt, have you seen, you gotta check this out, Britt. 
PB Blaster's come a long way since our, our redneck days of fixing everything. And having to check out this. Oh, man. Look at I this. I really could have used that. Check this out. Look at this. You've got a controlled spray. You can just drip. You can go little ways and just kind of, you know, nice little controlled flow there. Or you can go on super skeet mode. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? But now it's on safety, so nobody can do it. Just folds in. And that, really that's as hot that. as you, honey. I really could have used that for my uh, DVD repair. No joke. One time. But Britt literally sprayed that they're trying to play a DVD movie back in the day of DVDs, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you sound old, doesn't it? You the DVD player literally wouldn't work, and you sprayed PB Blaster into a DVD player, and the movie this didn't work. You're probably trying to watch like a lad, and she was, mind you, in her mid 20s. Uh, yeah, so, anyways, okay, well, now we're gonna get some uh, a piece of brass to drive that out, and a big hammer, and then if we have to, progressively bigger hammer, and then progressively bigger hammer. If it really gets nasty, we're going to heat this up with a torch, try to get this to expand, hopefully, and uh, just keep driving this sucker out. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, we're going to go into progressive methods of violence here. So small brass, medium-sized ball peen hammer. Um, and then just the bigger, the bigger we got to go, the bigger thing. But the reason you want to use brass, ideally, in this case, is that like if it blows, you know, flies off and hits this piece of metal here that we want to make sure stays intact, this brass is softer and it's going to give as opposed to if it were a piece of steel it would it would potentially mar up this piece of steel so so what i was afraid of it's not giving a lot um the next thing i'd love to consider would be I mean, cause I had to wait, the one out front I had to wail on and I'm kind of not looking forward to what I'm going to have to do on this one. I got a bad feeling this isn't going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see how medieval on this we got to get, but. We're gonna take a emery cloth, Brillo pad, sandpaper, whatever. We're gonna clean this out. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. You gotta be careful because if there's burrs in there, uh, you know, you could destroy your fingers. So just uh, make sure that's uh, just pretty decent, clean and smooth in there. Probably put a little dab of grease in there for you. Go to ram that. Uh, that thing in there no you perverts probably gonna have something to say about that whole situation right there but it's okay i get it <laughs> a lot of jokes to be made here i know um so probably a lot of your mom jokes too we're gonna take this thing we're gonna probably put some grease on it but it should theoretically oh oh my gosh beautiful so that's gonna go back in there just like that we're gonna be in business here real quick this is great also, this has got a slotted fitting. Uh, you may see it, you may not. There you go, kind of deal. You can kind of tell it's flat there. It's gonna go, see that slotted orientation there? So we're gonna make sure we get it back in there. So we're gonna push this thing in here. If we really have to, we're gonna put a piece of wood over this or a really pe soft piece of something. Tap it in there with a dead blow or a rubber mallet or something. And uh, Britt's taking Ditch Witch stickers off there. Can want it to say almond. Should have just made, should have started with the D and just make it say itch witch, or oh my gosh, take the D and, and just say itch itch. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> just two taps, nice and easy. Want, want. Okay, like three or four. Okay, that's probably good actually, because I think the spec in the book says there's supposed to be a gap there. So we'll uh, we'll put. We'll put the uh, pinch nut on there, or the bolt, and we'll go from there. So now the next thing is we need to check torque. Uh, I need to look at the book and see what the torque requirements are. GoPro battery's trying to dial me here. 
so we're at a point where we're going to put a um, a torque wrench on this thing 80 to 90 pounds on that part i can't remember what that's supposed to be there that nut but we cranked her down too much probably just consult with your manual there and we got that now we're going to put our tracks back on we're going to put grease into our fitting there and that'll put tension on it and then there's over that you put a four foot level on the tracks and there's a half inch of uh sag in there and they say that's the proper tension we're going to we'll clean out that dirt out of there brit's working on getting the stickers off that thing we'll go find an almond sticker slap on her tonight it'll be super cool fitting here that's how you take the pressure off the track right most everything is tensioned by grease okay there we go folks that's awesome so we're gonna grab a grease gun squirt our grease you know inject our grease there <laughs> and uh and then tension these tracks up here we go now's when i wish i had a battery powered grease gun that's for sure there we are we're wrapped up so you want to check um, the slack of the tracks like this. There's supposed to be, I think it's about a half inch of slack. That's about three eighths right there, so I'm going to call that good. And uh, that's that. Long night. Actually, I don't know. Not that long. Long evening. Got to put all our tools away. All that stuff. Tr machine needs to be back in operation tomorrow. Our other skid steer loader is on a job that's an hour from that site and it needs to be up there. Um, I really need to get a second loader for a backup so we don't have to go hard to fix things like this, although it's not a big deal. Really, I mean, it's business. You got to do, do what you got to do. Even though long time established business, sometimes you got to do this kind of stuff. And we still work a ton. I guess I'm making it sound like we try not to work evenings too much anymore, but uh, this is one of those, you got to do it. So, folks, with that being said, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps is the main thing. Have a good one. Once a year for, oh, the last 20-some years, I would replace a truck. And it wouldn't be breaking down or anything else. But, you know, it would start to approach maybe 100,000 miles. And I would just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and replace the oldest truck with the most miles on it.